and welcome in to another Monday Night Live stream. I am TVJ. This is my channel, TVJ, and I hope you're all having a great new year. Uh, for the new year, I've decided to uh, change some things around here. Hopefully, uh, you can tell the difference in the lighting and the sound. Uh, if it doesn't look or sound good, please let me know. I've done a couple recordings and looked good and sounded good to me, so hopefully it is for you guys as well. Uh, looks like the chat room's already busy, so let's see who's here tonight. Looks like, uh, David's here, Jason's Lab is here, Good Monkey's here. Uh, I uh, actually got a chance to see Good Monkey's first ever live stream today. He did an unboxing of some stuff he sent himself and, uh, I guess a new computer, if I'm not mistaken, from somebody. So, uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, Tommy's here. Hello, Tommy. Joe's here. And uh, for those who don't know, Joe has a brand new channel called Learn Blue Iris. Uh, so go check him out. I think he already has 70 subscribers, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, <laughs> he may pass me by next week. Uh, Tony's here. Hi, Tony. Eric is here. I saw Eric, uh, you attended the seven hour marathon live stream <laughs> the other day by Aaron Parecki. How did that go? I'd be curious to know. I have uh, not really checked a whole lot of it out. Probably won't since it's seven hours long, but I'd be curious to know how it went. Eric says sound is good and video is good. Awesome. Hopefully this is better than my usual setup. Bob is here all the way from Canada. The audio is clipping. Okay, well, I can bring it down a little bit. It was a marathon, all right, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there were some slow spots. It's a seven-hour broadcast. I can't imagine even sitting still or sitting doing anything for seven hours, yet alone streaming on YouTube. Uh, so... <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so I think I'm all caught up in the chat. Uh, so a couple things tonight, um, basically I had wanted to do a 12 days of tech miss in honor of Christmas. And then I was like, well, 12 days of whatever. And then of course new year came by and I didn't stream. So now it's 12 days of Linux or 12 uses of Linux. And I'm also doing a streaming project for, we'll just say a local church and, uh, well, <laughs> try to do an install today and. Second time we tried to do install and still had issues, so I'm going to discuss that as well. And then anything else that comes about, we shall see. Oh, that's right. I forgot Jason's in Canada, too. So Jason and Bob are in Canada. And uh, Good Monkey was in Alaska for a while, but is now on the East Coast, I believe. So he's kind of like he was in Canada. <laughs> anyway, um, so... I'm actually going to do this in reverse. I'm going to do streaming issues first. So I was contacted by a, uh, a chaplain of a, we'll just say a church. And uh, he asked me to help set up, you know, build a streaming setup. And so I bought, or we bought, I should say, uh, two bird dog P100 cameras, an A10 mini pro, a streaming bridge, and a little mixer to, you know, mix sound and it's a very basic setup it's two cameras and a laptop feed going into an atem streaming to the streaming bridge which is across the campus or across the building i should say and the building has a cable system so the streaming bridge is feeding the cable system and so this is how they can stream you know uh their services to the residents because it's actually a nursing home kind of with the church and uh so we were going to stream from the chat you know from the church to the cable head end and then out to all the rooms and i thought that was a perfect case for an a10 mini small simple only three inputs the streaming bridge works perfectly with it so perfect combination it's all network based which means i could just go across the network no need to run fiber or some other weird setup sounded good to me well um, so first install we had ran into camera issues. The camera was like two versions behind, tried to update the firmware over it, 
got bricked. Have no idea why, or at least I didn't have any idea why. Now I know why, but just bricked itself. So had to delay that. Had to order some more things. We, um, so today we decided to start the install again. I had the day off since it's holiday, and so I went over there. We tried to hook it everything up. The camera came back, of course, and it turns out that the cable line that goes from the PoE switch to the camera must be bad because if you power the camera off of a, like with a 10 foot ethernet cable, camera works fine. You use the cable that goes through the wall and anytime you try to move the camera around, uh, the camera dies and the switch throws a PoE error. So I think the cable's bad. Uh, as far as I could tell, which explains to me why when I did a firmware update last time, the camera bricked itself because it was interrupted and therefore, you know, dead firmware. And yeah, as, it's, as Bob points out, it's shorting out or just disconnecting. The other camera plugged in the same switch on a much shorter cable works fine. And this camera works fine on a short cable. It's only this... I don't know, 35 feet, maybe 45 feet long cable that's buried in a wall. I mean, it's a brand new cable, but it's just not working. So I tried re-terminating the ends, thinking maybe the, well, just one of the ends was bad. Nope, still didn't fix the issue. So somewhere in this wall, <laughs> actually suspended, it's, a, it's a suspended ceiling. Um, somewhere in the suspended ceiling, it's just bad or something. I don't know. So, uh, as Bob says, shorting now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hadn't think I I didn't think of that either. And then, of course, it happened to me the first time I used the camera. So, uh, definitely, don't do firmware updates over PoE. <laughs> Learn that or something. Yeah, I mean, I wish I had a pocket Ethernet, but also I'm not doing cabling in this job. I specifically said I'm not going to do any cabling, so they paid an electrician to put it in. So they're going to pay an electrician to fix it, or I should say have them come back and fix it. So I'm not doing cabling. Um, I'm not insured against that, so therefore I'm not even going to touch that. Uh, I am technically a consultant. I have consulting insurance for my jobs that I do. Therefore, I'm not running cables for people. And yes, it was an electrician. Uh, I could probably tell you where there's one right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you're watching, I don't know what's wrong with the cable. So I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying <laughs> it doesn't work. Um. So the issue I have, and this is probably where uh, Joe or Tony could probably help out with, is, and this is the first use of Linux, which is Nginx. So we want to push an ATEM to Nginx, oh, excuse me. So the goal is to push the stream across campus to the cable head end to Facebook and to YouTube. So I got a Raspberry Pi 4. Of course, we started this project like a year ago, so it took time. We, we had plenty of time to get one in. So I built Nginx on this Raspberry Pi and did the RTMP module, and I can stream to it uh, from OBS. And it goes both places that I want it to go. Um, but it will not work with the ATEM. So the ATEM Mini can feed to the Nginx RTMP server. And using a push, it goes to Facebook. Or goes to um, Facebook, yeah. Just fine. But it will not go to the streaming bridge. I can watch it on VLC, but it will not go to the streaming bridge for some reason. And I don't know if this is just a RTMP module configuration issue or if there's some issue with ATEM's 
going through something else to get to the uh, stream bridge. I don't know. Um, in a previous video, I kind of hacked the streaming bridge protocol or that they use, you know, their, their version of RTMP. Nothing seems odd in it that would cause this to happen. But I just for some reason cannot get the A10 Mini to stream to the streaming bridge through an RTMP reflector um, built on Nginx. So I don't know if uh, if that's something Joe or Tony you guys want to play around with. I have a streaming bridge to play with, but the uh, ATEM Mini switcher is there so that they can use it to see video in case the electrician comes in and wants to prove that the, everything's working. So I don't have an ATEM Mini, but I do have an R a streaming bridge to play with. Um, so... Welcome in, uh, camera mano, mano, um, one, I, uh, welcome to the stream, DJ Ware, welcome in. So, yeah, Tony, Joe, if you want to play around with something, let me know offline, you guys know how to get a hold of me. Um, so yeah, so that's the first use of Linux that I have, uh, which is Nginx, which is a web server for those who don't know, and one of the cool things is somebody built an RTMP reflector basic service into it. And uh, it's really easy to get installed and it works reliably. I've used it for years to stream um, a feed from work to my house. <laughs> and it's worked for years. So uh, definitely something to check into if you haven't. Um, so... Nginx is the first use of uh, Linux that I wanted to talk about today. And uh, if there are any questions about Nginx, we can move on to the next one. Uh, the biggest one in my house that I use Linux for is uh, TrueNAS, which is, I guess, BSD-based, but still, it's Linux. I call it Linux. <laughs> so uh, TrueNAS, I'm sure you all know about TrueNAS by now. If you don't, it's a storage server. Um, great platform, allows you to use ZFS for storage, which is one of the most, from what I've been told, one of the best ways to, uh, best file systems for storage. I love that it supports Samba, NFS, uh, Apple even, <laughs> it even supports the old Apple file share, uh, does S3 buckets or allows you to do S3 storage, which is cool if you're into that. Uh, and want to play around with that. And so, uh, TrueNAS is definitely something I use uh, here in the house. I did technically use it at work for a while. Um, <laughs> we, uh, at one point, had uh, a need to just store, like, 60 terabytes. And so, for a couple, well, like, $1,000, maybe $2,000, we bought six 10-terabyte drives. I put them in an old server that we had, and with TrueNAS, I had 60 terabytes of usable space instantly. So uh, we no longer use that at work. We're not allowed to use that, so therefore uh, that's a different conversation. But uh, <laughs> definitely use TrueNAS um, all the time here at home. Uh, okay, let me look at the chat. It's getting awfully busy. Joe says the reflector, I'm sure, is stripping the secret sauce. That's the thing, though. There's there's nothing secret about it. It's just um, the ATEM, instead of doing uh, number or names for codecs, they use numbers or vice versa. I think that's what, actually what it is. And then they just tag it as black magic, whatever, blah, blah, blah. There's nothing special to it, and it works to Facebook. So that's the part I'm confused about. Um, like I said, I'm gonna I have a streaming bridge that I'd like to maybe have you guys uh, stream to me if that's possible. Uh, we'll go we'll talk we'll talk offline. The hack that I did for OBS was basically um, let me find my notes so I don't actually say that wrong. <laughs> 
so the hack was basically that you under the FLV mux uh, you take out the encoder number value and you replace it with a name so instead of like Kodak 4 it's ABC1 instead of you know audio Kodak 3 it's MP4A and then you remove the encoder name variable that OBS wants to insert and you tell OBS to stream it as Blackmagic AVC encoder. So there's all you're doing is changing the variables, the metadata variables basically uh, that the encoder sends because the streaming bridge is locked on to uh, those three variables, AVC1, MP4A, and Blackmagic design ABC encoder. So if it doesn't see those three parameters in the metadata, it won't receive it. So I don't think Nginx is actually changing anything. I think it would just duplicate the packets as is. So it shouldn't be a problem. And yet it is. <laughs> so this is why I'm saying I don't understand if it's just me not coding something correctly in the, the push mechanism uh, inside Nginx, but it works to go to Facebook and it works at home when I tested it using OBS, so I don't know. It seems weird. Uh, Eric says, if I recall correctly, Aaron discovered... Yeah, it doesn't allow generic RM RTMP, but what the uh, ATEM streaming or ATEM mini is outputting is RTMP, it's just changed a little bit to meet their exact specs or metadata. And so that's how they lock it down. I just told OBS to pretend to be a ATEM and it worked fine. So uh, is my internet going on and off? I haven't noticed anything. Has anybody else noticed any internet issues? Uh, we shall, you know, let me know. Yeah, I just discussed that. Yeah, unfortunately, my uplink is only 10 megs, and my wife is doing a Zoom call upstairs. <laughs> so we're probably pushing the limit of our uh, our bandwidth. Actually, let me just go find out. You guys are techies. You probably like to know what we're doing right now. Uh, PF Sense actually is one of the things that I wanted to talk about in terms of uh, uh, <laughs> things I use Linux for. Uh, so we, you know, P I, my router is PFSense. I love PFSense for stability. Uh, and I love the fact that there's a million tutorials out there for it, which is uh, <laughs> makes it a lot easier to configure things. Um, oh yeah, my uplink right now is we are pegging about four to five megs, it looks like right now. I have 10, so it's in theory not an issue. Um, but yeah. Uh, for those who are curious, uh, my PFSense router is a uh, Core i5 running at 3.3 gigs with uh, 16 gigs of RAM which of course don't even touch. It's only using 4% of that. It's a old Dell Optiplex um, that I just happened to put a 10 gig network card in because I could. <laughs> uh, so uh, the router definitely can handle way more speed than my internet connection does. My uh, router has been up for 158 days and 34 minutes without a reboot, so it probably is time for one. But PFSense is solid, so no need to uh, change that. Uh, since I just noticed it, if YouTube says I have 10 concurrent viewers and only 6 likes, so if you could uh, hit the like button, I would appreciate that. All right, let's get back to see uh, who's where. 
Tony says you'd ha be happy to help me off offline. Thank you, Tony. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could. Um, might be an interesting video. Hmm. Anyway, Tony says there's no issues on his end, so I'm guessing whoever was having issues, I forget. Uh, Jason's lab, I guess maybe it's just you. Or whoever that was. Um, oh, Bob, so Bob, you noticed it too? Uh, Bob is a big PF Sense fan and has a very interesting setup from what I remember. Uh, <laughs> we discussed it and I looked at his config one time. It was pretty uh, interesting. Hi, Keith. Thank you for making it. Uh, I probably should give a shout out to Keith and uh, via Joe uh, for providing the uh, my new audio interface. Uh, if you remember two weeks ago, my last stream, right before I went to go on, the thing just died. <laughs> and so I had to go uh, with a lob mic and I, I'm sure that did not sound good. <laughs> uh, so... I want to thank you guys uh, for the new interface. Hopefully it sounds better and you uh, are enjoying the better quality. It is a uh, very interesting, we'll just say that. It's the uh, Go Mixer Pro. Very interesting device, clearly designed for a cell phone <laughs> by the manual. Um, but it definitely works with the 48 volt phantom power that this microphone requires. Um, I'm also playing around with placement, so hopefully it sounds better than it has in the past. Uh, yes, and Bob is pointing out that there are several other YouTubers in the chat, so uh, if you don't follow them, pretty much everyone, <laughs> except for Bob, actually, I think is a YouTuber. Um, maybe Camera Mano, wherever you went, if you're still here, I think, I don't, don't know if you have a channel and tommy i don't think has a channel so i guess that's not entirely true but um yeah so the interface started out with joe went to keith and came back to uh me so yeah interesting journey for sure no it's not a zoom one was that was it supposed to be a zoom one <laughs> i don't know um Either way, it's uh, it's working. Uh, it's a little like I said, it is very interesting. I will hand, I will say that. Um, <laughs> so where was I? Uh, yeah. So uses for Linux that I have around the house. Uh, Nginx for RTMP reflector services. I use TrueNAS for storage. Um, my TrueNAS server is a. Dell Optiplex 1080, something like that. It's uh, got four two terabyte drives in it, and it has uh, what is this? What's the current usage? I don't remember. Uh, it is got 16 gigs of RAM. Actually, that's the most that it'll support. I wish it could do more because as if you don't know, ZFS loves RAM. I wish I had more RAM for that machine. Uh, my array is, I call it four drive array. It has 2.36 Tibby bytes used and 2.79 Tibby bytes free or terabytes basically. Um, Cause they use the weird, they use the weird Tibby bytes instead of terabytes. Uh, so yeah, so my, True NAS box with four two terabyte drives is 46% full. Um, it is actually um, something I'm considering upgrading, but I don't want to pay the power bill <laughs> for the upgrade. Um, basically, I have access to an old server with 12. Yeah, it's 12 two terabyte drives um, can, where basically I have access to it if, if it's mine, if I want it. But basically it's like, do I want to pay <laughs> the power bill to have a 
old server with 12 two terabyte drives? I don't think I do, but I'm curious. I'm kind of, I kind of want it. Maybe I'll just have it as my backup server and then I'll just turn it off when I'm not using it. What do you guys think? Oh, the uh, chat is passing me by. Holy crap. Um, Joe says, still clipping a lot of cl clipping. Sonos 5.1. Wow. Um, the levels here are barely getting into yellow. So if I'm clipping, I'm not sure where I'm clipping at. I have to fetch now too. Does that mean you subscribe to him now? Uh, yes, Bob, thank you for posting all those YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, as I said, Bob's not a actual YouTuber, but man, he'd probably be really good at some stuff. Like, I'm sure Bob would have a good YouTube channel. Oops, jeez. Chad is fly me, flying by here. Uh, good Monkey says, one of these days I'll get my PFSense set up again. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I love PFSense because all the different plugins you can do. I mean, at one point, I was playing around with BGP on PFSense using FFR, FRR. I forget the plugin. Uh, but the fact that I could play around with that <laughs> at home on some software, I always thought was really cool. So I'm a big fan of PFSense. Uh, of course, Tom Lawrence is a huge fan of PFSense, and I watch all his videos. So I learned from him. Uh, I used to use it for OpenVPN. I've since switched to WireGuard as my VPN. Um, and I'm probably going to play with TailScale or... Um, what's the other one? I just... Name escapes me real quick, real quick. Hi, honey. Everyone say hi to my wife. <laughs> I, Haley just jumped in the chat, as she always does. So I appreciate it, hun. And I have to go... Hold on, I am the chat is flying by people. Uh curse uh, thanks, Bob. Fifty six cores. Um, yeah, that's a little ridiculous for a home lab, Bob. <laughs> um but I get it. I mean, like I said, the the box I'm considering is probably got something like 24, maybe, court. I mean, it's a pretty beefy box. <laughs> As Eric pointed out, yes, 12 2 terabytes would make a good heat source. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just exposing two wires and cr crossing two wires and having a mark for the power bill. Um, sorry if I'm skipping around. I, I'm not following certain conversations. So uh, I do love the fact that you're all here and that the chat is very full tonight and busy, which is awesome. Oh, yeah, so you subbed great. You know, Bob, and I just thought of this. Tony or I could interview you like Tony J interviewed Joe and then therefore you'd be on YouTube without a YouTube channel. Or maybe you could just like co-host. It could be like once a month you could just be a co-host and then there's no work on your part, but you get to share your cool stuff and all the stuff you're doing. Just a thought. Probably am. Um, here, how about that? I'll turn it down a little bit. Hopefully that uh, doesn't clip as bad. Like I said, you guys are making the screen scroll by fast, which is awesome. I just turned down the interface, so uh, hopefully now it's probably too quiet. Let me know. Yep, PF Sense, Tom Lawrence. It was actually not too far from me. Zero tier, zero tier, yeah. So zero tier, or um, 
yeah, I just forgot the other one. <laughs> wow. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so uh, I'm gonna probably play around with one of those new VPN services just to see. I have really no use for it. Um, I don't do a lot of like site to site stuff, or I don't, you know, this is the one device that needs to access my house. So WireGuard's probably good enough for it, but uh, just the idea of it sounds kind of cool if I ever have time. David says he switched to WireGuard uh, tail scale via the head scale open source. Ooh. Is that easy to set up? I think Tom Lawrence said it was, but then again, his skill level is different than mine. So I'm curious, David, uh, how hard was that to set up and how reliable has it been? Bob is saying hi to my wife. Who I hear moving around upstairs. <laughs> Everyone's saying hi to Haley. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the video makes it look like it's stupid easy. <laughs> uh, tail scale is amazing, almost flawless. iOS won't let you do a custom control server. That's, in a way, I understand it, but in a way, I think that's kind of weird. The stream's cutting out. Uh-oh. Why is my, my people are, my phone, my computer's going crazy over here with text messages. So is YouTube the issue? Oh yeah, I see it freezing on the preview. Well, that just sucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never, my my traffic graph looks consistent, but in the little preview window over here in YouTube, I am stuff, but definitely buffering, and because I am way behind on the uh, YouTube Studio. That's very interesting. Like for example, Haley just said hi. In that, that happened like three minutes ago. <laughs> so I definitely do see issues uh, in the YouTube Studio. wonder if I can close it's got to be YouTube right like it can't just be me I don't have it I'm not even capping out my bandwidth oh Haley says it's better now never cut out for Joe well Joe you have what you what'd you say two Two one gig internet connections with redundancy. So <laughs> if you lost it. <laughs> WireGuard and Tor, but not at the same time. Okay. I've never played with Tor. I have really no interest in playing with Tor. Um I don't know, I just doesn't never really tried that, but I also don't uh I can't think of what it's called. <laughs> File share, uh, whatever they call that. Reli reliability of head scale has been awesome. The relay works amazing with direction. Yeah. I mean, I did. I have played around with uh, zero tier when I think it first came out. Um, just on two computers. Uh, so that cool, that stuff is cool. Um, but I just not, I haven't actually played with it in PF since. I don't like the idea of having it on clients because like, that seems like a backdoor into the network. I feel like it should be on the router and then via the router have access control list. So you control access to the network from one central location and that you're not just installing zero tier or tail scale on clients. Maybe that's just me, but I feel like the router should do that stuff and then let the clients be clients. I mean, each, each person has their own use case. Uh, Bob has 2.5 gig and 1 gig internet connections. So, 
Good for Bob. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I really do need a better internet connection. I mean, I have like 300, 400 down, but I only have 10 up. And um, right now I'm using two and a half meg or three meg of that 10. Uh, but I definitely feel like I should have a better internet pipe for sure. But mine's expensive. It's like 80 bucks. And the next package is like 110. And if I, if we were to move like three miles that way, we get gig fiber for 45. <laughs> it just internet, the internet these days makes no sense to me. I am not doing ultra low latency. At least I don't think I was. Did that get turned on? Can I verify that in the studio, YouTube studio? I f think you can. Hold on. Please stand by. Uh, 10 viewers, 11 likes. So thank you all. Stream settings. Oh, I am on ultra low latency. Well, crap. <laughs> um, that could be the issue. I do notice my preview all of a sudden in YouTube studio is back to uh, normal. So maybe the issue resolved itself. Yeah, so apparently it's ultra low latency is my issue. Oops. But thank you, Eric, for uh, bringing that up, and maybe that's the uh, my source of the issue. I like your idea, Bob. Um, <laughs> fun little tidbit, I can actually see a skyscraper if i could get a wireless link i could have direct connection to my work <laughs> uh not gonna happen but technically i can see the skyscraper at work uh so i could do you know a relay um won't work because i'm too far away uh the fresnel zone uh, is going to be killed by the fact that I'm not tall. <laughs> the skyscraper is tall, but my house is definitely not. So uh, the Fresnel zone, you know, would come in. And if this is, you know, if your chat session is the uh, field, the Fresnel zone is going to go way down in the field and therefore not work. But I have thought about that. <laughs> uh, yep, there's the problem. David has it on routers, but any remote device also has tail scale. Well, I'm definitely not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, I could, um, but it seems kind of not the best idea right now. Stats for nerds. Oh, on the YouTube page. Oh, I forgot you could do that. I forgot you can actually, there's like a whole tab for that. I'm going to go call up my stream and see what it's actually showing me. I'm curious now. Eric says uh, he will tough it out. So I appreciate that. Uh, Bob wants to know how far my link is, it or link would be. That was kind of my justification, was, you know, hey, if I ever needed to, and the internet was out, I would have a direct link. Um, how far is that, or would that be direct? I'm curious now. Let's go to Google. I'm not going to show you this, obvious, obviously. <laughs> but, um... Let's just see. Line of sight. How far is it? Measure tool. 
measure difference, distance I mean, Fifteen point three five miles is what it says. So, um, I have I have line of sight that I can tell you, um, but yeah, it's it's definitely, um, it is definitely not uh, a short link for sure. Oh, and if I actually, if I move the dot to be exact, it's 15.79. So 15.79 miles would be the wireless link if uh, I even tried. Interesting. Yeah. Not going to discuss that, but interesting what the, that link goes over a very interesting place. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> um, interesting. All right, so let's get back to the chat. I see it bouncing around a little bit. Um, Tony says the stream is fine now. The wireless link would be very secure. I would agree. It's a great backup. It's a secure link. I'm, I may have to uh, toss that by the bosses and see what they say. Your cat gave up already? Uh, my dog's... I have a dog. My dog's upstairs with Haley, I think. But yes, did, did the cat smash the like button? That's more important. Thank you, Bob. That's the most important thing is, did you smash the like button? Oh, speaking of my dog, here comes my wife and my dog. <laughs> Yeah, good monkey says his cat gave up a while ago. <laughs> so here's my dog. Oops, let me remove the chat. This is Puka. <laughs> Say hi, Poops. Oh, she just sneezed a little bit. <laughs> she is. She's 11. She's a Chihuahua pug mix. And I think she's fed up. <laughs> You want to go back to her? <laughs> Everyone said hi to you, by the way. I don't know if you saw that I or not. I saw. Thank you. <laughs> I love you being here. Thank you for checking out the stream. Oh, now she's playing with the light. You can tell you used to be a model. <laughs> she sees a light and starts doing model things with it. <laughs> Uh, did you guys hear that? If you want essential oil packages or samples, let me know. She's making them right now. Uh, I appreciate that, good monkey. Yeah, I mean, we we actually have a wireless uh, link at work that goes about 10 miles uh, using small dishes. And... If I ever get a chance to go back up on the roof, um, I do plan on making a video about that link. I just have to hide. <laughs> well, I have to basically hide a lot of information about it. So I have to shoot it in a way that you can't tell where it's at. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll make that video or not. Probably not. But I would love to make a video about our link that goes 10 miles using Ubiquity dishes. Pretty cool stuff. I think I've shared that with you privately. I'm I'm not mistaken. Uh Jason's lab says Microtik, yes. I've never actually seen a Microtik device or got to play with one. I know their OS is a little bit weird, but um people seem to like them. I know they make cheap switches for ten gig. Um that I remember seeing like years ago. Uh that they had a cheap ten gig switch. Joe says, yay, Puka. Tony lost me again. Good Monkey says, hi, Puka. 
Yeah, it's P-O-O-K-A, no I. So very close. He says it's buffering for him. It must just be YouTube and their ultra low latency. Uh, PF Sense says my gateway is whatever RTT is. I forget what that stands for. The RTT is 12 and the RTT SD is 4. There's no loss. And it's perfect for Joe. So, must be whatever um, data centers most of you are going through. through. Uh, oh, round trip time. That makes sense. <laughs> Haley's making fun of me. I would never. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. No, I really was. Oh, boy. Yeah, so I got to make sure to leave myself a note that uh, to not do ultra low latency, I guess, next time. Oh, well. Live and learn. Um, So where were we on my list? I think we're only like three in which means we'll definitely go past an hour so joe will be happy about that <laughs> as Haley laughs um okay so 12 days or 12 uses of linux uh true nas nginx uh pf sense um the one i the next one i love the most would probably be uh Nextcloud, um, I use Ubuntu and Nextcloud. Um, it is absolutely my favorite way to do your own Google Cloud or OneDrive or whatever it is. I mean, not as redundant and resilient as Google Drive and them services, but obviously a lot cheaper, especially since if I look at my TrueNAS box, Let me log back in. It timed out. My next cloud uh, data usage. Oh, it's only 1.1 terabytes. That seems low. Um, but yeah, I mean, next cloud data is 1.1 terabytes. If I were to pay, you know, pay that in storage on Google Drive. I don't know. What's, what's Google Drive's prices these days? I looked it up earlier. So you basically have to buy two terabytes, so it's ten dollars a month. So I'm hosting it myself, and I'm saving 120 bucks a year. So um, Next Cloud, of course, has clients. So my phone has a client. Uh, all three of my computers have a client. They all sync to the same user profile, and then I can access all the data. So if I forget to, or I want to access a file from work, I could just go on NextCloud, access it, and then, you know, the computer work could be off. So um, I love NextCloud for that. Um, I know there's a lot more uses than what I'm using it for. I'm sure I have other things that, you know, sync thing would probably be a good use or a good replacement for NextCloud. But I love the ability to just call up a web page and access my files. So that's why I use NextCloud. Sync thing was a use of Linux that I wanted to talk about. Uh, pretty cool tool for syncing things. If you have two machines that are always on or that, you know, you want to keep in sync. But when I wanted to sync like five things or, you know, three computers and my phone and all that stuff. Nextcloud worked out a lot better in my opinion. But syncing is a very powerful tool uh, and it runs on every OS that I'm aware of. So check it out if you haven't. Uh, let's see here, what else is my on my list? Um, so XCPNG, I know there was, you know, the always constant debate over Proxmox, Windows Server, VMware, XCPNG, whatever you know your flavor of virtualization is, or containers if you're uh, into that, like Docker. Um, 
I don't do containers. I don't really, I don't know. I, I understand the concept behind them, and I, tr- I play with them briefly, but it just, to me, I'd rather have a VM that I could just click on, hit, you know, create snapshot or create backup and have the whole VM backed up as opposed to just having your data here and your config file here and what happens if the host goes down. Like, I want to be able to just restore a VM and have it somewhere or clone it and have it go somewhere else under a different server. You know, one of the things is the radio station. I play with stuff here, and then if I want to take it to the radio station, I, in theory, could just clone it to the radio station if I had them in the same pool or the same uh, server configuration. And I just don't want to do that with Docker. I don't want to have to move where you move data here and have config files. And it just, to me, a VM makes more sense, honestly, than a Docker file. But, you know, there are definitely use cases where Docker files are cool or Docker, you know, storage is, or not VM, containers. That's what I'm trying to try to say. So, uh, yeah, so XCPNG, I know Tony and I were discussing this a while back uh, about virtualization. He was looking at Proxmox. I said XCPNG. I like it because it's got a built-in backup tool. It allows you to do live migrations. It seems like to me that, uh, is it Vate? Who do, who's behind it? I think, is it, I think it's Vate. They're constantly improving it. Like, there's always updates out for it. So, to me, they seem like a better virtualization platform to go with. Um, but, if I mean, there's nothing wrong with Proxmox if you want to go that route. Uh, another use uh, for uh, Linux is I run a Unify controller here in my house. I have one single access point right here uh, above out of the screen. But um, I do have one of those mini switches, the the five ports that's PoE powered, uh, the Flex Mini, I think they're called. I do have one of those, kind of as I just throw down switch. So I that is in my Unified Cloud Controller as well. Um, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Probably the biggest use of Linux, not here, um, but in my professional career, is Rivendell Radio Automation. At the, at the university I work at, um, that has proven to be just absolutely uh, the best and most reliable automation system I've used. It is definitely not the most full feature one, but it is definitely accomplishes the, you know, the, the job we need it to, and it's been the most reliable. Sure beats uh, the Windows, what we used to use, and you can't beat the price, which is free. So... Uh, Rivendell is another use. Bob wants to know aren't, uh, about my ISP data speeds. Uh, they, I don't know what the top upload speed actually is. I'm oh, sorry, that's Joe who wants to know that question. Um, well, we can find out. See, um, what is my fastest upload speed available? Again, I'm not going to show you this because I'd have to reveal my address. So, um, let's just see. It's searching, or sorry, it's fetching offers currently. (laughs) Still fetching offers. Come on, Spectrum. I want me to log in. Well, crap. (laughs) I don't want to log in right now. Let's do the I'm not a current subscriber option.
Um, I don't want their internet. Well, crap. If I'm a new customer, I can get gig internet for $10 more a month. <laughs> Uh, still does not say what the upload speed is. And it doesn't say uh, any of these details what the upload speed is. Um, none of these will tell me what the uh, internet upload speed actually is. So I'd probably have to call and find out, honestly. <laughs> I, I don't know what the actual upload speed is. I do find it interesting I can get a gig download for $10 or more if I'm a new customer. Uh, David says, I use Docker in a VM and back up the VM. Yeah, I mean, you could do it that way. Um, definitely nothing wrong with that, but... I guess I just like to build things <laughs> uh, and have more control, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Tony, because we've, we've been on topic the entire t time of this channel. No, I'm just, just messing with you. Um, so the tower lights uh, are still out. Um, I've got a quote from a tower company that's nearby. They are very reasonable priced. They were going to come out tomorrow, but I don't have approval to spend the money yet. So it's in finances hands right now, basically trying to figure out who's going to pay for that because it's not in the budget. So currently the lights are out. Uh, our um, NOTAM or notice to airmen is good through April Ninth, I think it is. It's April sometime. April 6th, April 9th. Um, so we have time. We're not going to wait that long, but I have to wait till the money is approved. And then we'll go out there and figure out what's going on. The biggest, I think, issue is I had to get approval for the first climb, and then I'm trying to get approval for a second climb, should it be warranted. Okay. Um. And so, you know, it's a, uh, it's like $2,000, sorry, it's about $1,000 a climber and they need two of them. So it's $2,000 a day for a tower crew to come out and climb. And if they can't fix it while on site the first time, then they have to do a second climb. And so it could be a $4,000 fix plus parts. I mean, so if they have to go get lights or if they need to go whatever i mean this could get expensive fast and i mean expenses all relative but i mean when it's not in your budget <laughs> a four thousand dollar hit is going to definitely hurt your budget so <laughs> uh joe if you want to go start a gofundme page to get faster internet uh, I would I would definitely let you do that. Um, I wish I was monetized and you guys could do super chats, um, but I'm not there yet. Um, where am I? Is that 690? Is that what my how many subscribers I have currently? 691. <laughs> Haley just says whoa in the background. <laughs> Yeah, I have 691 subscribers. <laughs> that was like 680 last week. Um, what was, where's my analytics on that? I'm curious what that was. In the last seven days, I have got 10 subscribers. So yeah, so um, definitely growing the channel that's for sure not as fast as some channels grow but then again i'm not your typical channel i don't do review videos or i don't talk about unify <laughs> i i actually 
I probably should. I should probably just do a channel on or a video on Unify just to get all the click traffic and then maybe they subscribe. I don't know. Um, I'm just not a review type of person. Like I'm not, I mean, I watch reviews, nothing wrong with reviews, but do you really want my opinion on something? Like, <laughs> I mean, maybe you guys do. I don't know. Um, oh yeah. So, oh, we went one hour. Great. Um, <laughs> we are now officially a Joe approved stream. <laughs> I could start a Patreon, I guess. I'm not quite sure what perks I give you guys, but I could start a Patreon. I do Venmo, if you want my Venmo number, or Venmo thing. Um, sorry, my phone has got messages. I'm trying to, people are trying to reach me for some reason. Um... The tower is 392 feet, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, it's like 390, 390 something. Um, no elevator, so it's a good climb. I'm not a climber. I don't know how hard that would be to climb, but um, I'm not afraid of heights, but I just don't have the certification or training, I should say. But more importantly, I don't have the training. Um, so there's a tower company about 45 minutes from here they seem like they're good guys so we're gonna go with them but that's cool you used to climb somebody retracted a message hunky joe yeah i mean i can only imagine how much they take i think it's is it as bad as apple like is it worse than apple which is what 30 percent Word is getting out. My channel is definitely growing. Um, I thank you all for helping grow that. I mean, I'm sure the uh, hours of views and likes and clicks that I get on the streams every every Monday is definitely helping. Um, I probably should produce more recorded content. I just, I don't know. I feel like it's not, A, it's not as fun to do recorded content. And... I have a weird thing where if it's recorded content, I feel like I have to be perfect. <laughs> and whereas with live television or streaming on YouTube, it's like, oh, well, that happened. Time to move on. <laughs> whereas recorded video, it's like, got to be perfect because it's being recorded. And uh, Haley can attest to this because Haley heard one day she was up here and I was downstairs recording a video. This is like a year ago, if not longer. Hold on. Sorry about that. So I was recording a video downstairs, and she's up here listening, and I, like, stopped and started over and over again. And it was just, it was not good. So um, I've always just liked live stuff. I mean, that's why I like to do live television, and so I like to do live streaming. And so this is, you know, fun and enjoyable and much more interactive than a recorded video. Um but I feel like the recorded videos are probably what helped grow the channel. So I am probably should do more of those. Um, if you look at my statistics, my recorded videos, you know, get a lot more views. Um, and especially my transmitter site tour, which, um, oops, where is the stats on that one? Because that just, this just amazes me to this day that I have a video that has gotten, yeah, so my five minute long video that I recorded over a year ago now uh, has 28,642 views. It has 747 likes, which is a 99.5% like to dis dislike ratio. Uh, so the fact that I have a video with 28,000 views is just amazing to me. And my second video, which is my home lab server, has 9,000 views. 
And then my quick tour of an Axia Livewire setup has 9,000 views. Uh, my network upgrade has 6,000 views. And uh, the next video I have is Inside the Dell Power Vault, which has 5,000 views. That's from five years ago. So it's kind of interesting what videos get views. Um, so I'm sorry, that was a complete tangent. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm catching up, Jason. <laughs> how long have you been on YouTube, Jason? I'm curious. Or actually, you know, how long have you been posting videos, I'm, I should say? People do know where to find the real info <laughs> about television engineering or radio engineering. Um, my radio videos are popular. I definitely should do more of those. Um should definitely focus on that. But then the channel's called TVJ, so <laughs> whatever. It's important. You don't want to lose those subs. I mean, that one, Joe unsubscribing from your channel would be, you know, could be the first nail in the coffin. I mean, you never know. <laughs> Climbing is easy. The unscheduled rapid descent is not fun. <laughs> That should be a t-shirt. Hon, <laughs> when you get your uh, t-shirt printer at work, I'm going to make a t-shirt <laughs> that says that. Eric says, everyone who does live streams knows recording, editing, fish. Yeah, it takes long. Yep. <laughs> oh, it does. I mean, um, I think I talked about it, was it last week or two weeks ago on my channel? If I go back to my statistics, um, hold on, let me go back to my thing. I, I close it out. So in my videos, if I look at the videos that have the most views, two of them were just quick videos I shot there was like no work on at all behind them the other one I spent like three hours recording <laughs> so my most popular video is a five minute video where I hit record walked around and hit stop my next video I spent like three hours working on the second third video I spent like an hour you know not even that like a half hour recording it and then editing on the computer on the computer so it was like very little work then I did my network upgrade rack, which took like four hours to do. Then you do the like the custom OBS feed. That thing took forever to make, and it's only got 3,000 views. And then you scroll down to like some other videos. The video I spent the most time on that I thought would be the most impactful, most viewed video is the NBA All-Star Game video. It has the fewest likes, like, <laughs> of almost any video I have, except for uh, the Generator video, which is also a lot newer. So, yeah, I mean, I spent lots of time on a video, and almost nobody watched it. <laughs> but I guess that's every YouTuber, I hear them say that. So, um, I'm not special in that, in that regard. Keith says to throw perfect out. Yeah, I mean, I wish I wish my brain could do that. The descender tool. Oh, when you're climbing. Like, are you climbing towers? Or are you climbing rocks? Because I don't think you use descender tools on towers. I think you'd hit the tower. But I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, YouTube takes 30% as well. I mean, they do provide the platform for free. <laughs> Excuse me. I feel like I need a co-host so I can just stop talking for a little bit.
Jason's been on YouTube for a year. Okay. My first... I've been on YouTube for technically a while because I posted my first video um, back in 2017. But I didn't actually start producing videos until um, April of 2001. And then I just kind of released some videos for a while. Then I kind of stopped. Well, I guess not as not as infrequently as I thought. But yeah, I mean, definitely don't publish enough videos, I'm sure, according to the algorithm. Um, yep, TikTok rules the day with those quick, you know, 30-second videos, which tell you nothing. Um, all right, so... <laughs> <laughs> completely took a detour there. Um, a couple other just uses I have for Linux. Um, <clears throat> I run Plex on Linux. Um, I do. I have 3CX running on Linux. Uh, 3CX is a phone system. They have a Linux version. Uh, I don't really use it, but I set it up just to play with it, and it does work. Um, Another thing that I've been playing around with recently is called Crater Invoices. Um, it's an invoice tool um, for my freelance work. It's sometimes it's confusing to me, like you know, keeping track of when I worked on things and how long it took for me to make. You know, that job took three hours or was it an hour? I can't remember. So I was playing around with an invoice tool to try to figure out if I could do invoicing a lot easier. Uh, it seems to work the way I want it to work, but I just haven't actually switched over to using it yet. Um, my biggest requirement is that the invoice tool has to be able to email other people with a PDF file. And I first tried Invoice Ninja, and that does not want to do that. Like, at least it didn't back then. So I've been looking for a good invoice tool. Uh, Creator is where I'm currently sitting on. Um, we'll see. Um, two other things that I've used, but I'm not currently using, is uh, your backup. I did a little video on that on a previous live stream. I think it is a pretty good tool. I did figure out that you can do uh, user authentication on it. So you can put a password on it and you can make user accounts. So you can change out of the base admin one and create your own. Uh, so that definitely upped the quality of that tool. Again, that's called Your Backup. Uh, definitely cool product. Probably should do more videos on that one. That is a cool thing to try. Um, and the final use that I have for 12 uses of Linux was MinIO. MinIO is, according to them, like one of the largest bucket uh provider you know companies in the world uh, at least that was their tagline on their website a while ago uh, they basically allow you to make s3 compatible buckets for storage and um, one of the things that i wanted to try out was to see if i could actually have replicated storage on different nodes and so i did set up a four node cluster they're virtual machines but they were four different machines with their own storage and again, this is MinIO. And I had four nodes talking to each other. And I shut one off. And it kept running. And I shut, I turned it back on. And then I saw files coming over and replicating. So the MinIO software does work if if you want to figure out or play with your own. Sorry. If you want to have your own version of S3 and have like four nodes placed around the country or wherever. Um, MinIO would definitely do that. Uh, I know some backup tools uh, will go to S3 compatible buckets. MinIO does that. MinIO is built into TrueNAS, or I should say has a plugin for TrueNAS. So uh, you can actually do uh, that as well. Uh, so yeah, so let me just recap my 12 uses of Linux uh, in no particular order. TrueNAS, XCPNG, 3CX, Crater Invoice Tool, N Nginx, Rivendell, MinIO, 
Your Backup, PFSense, Unify, Nextcloud, Plex, and SyncThing. All those run on Linux. I use some of them in various different forms, um, or I plan on doing using them at some point. Uh, so those are my 12 uses for Linux. Uh, let's go back to the chat before we head on out of here. Uh, if I've learned one thing from my YouTube journey is people like to see your mistakes. See the t-shirt with the photo would be popular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the climbing one. I have a really cool photo of a tower. I think it's my thumbnail for a previous video. So I could put... <laughs> I could put the TV, t the radio tower, and then captions underneath or wherever. But, you know, the climb's easy, but coming down is not. Um, I would totally make that t-shirt. Maybe I could sell the design. I know uh, SoCal, the broadcaster, who's another YouTuber, that if you like TV radio stuff, you'll like his page. Uh, SoCal broadcaster, he sells shirts. And actually, I used I have one of his shirts. Um, pretty nice shirt, actually. So I could design some TV related shirts and sell them. That'd be a good way to monetize the channel or make some money on the channel. You like it in Invoice Ninja? See, I the tool seemed cool. Like it, it definitely seemed like it was a cool thing. But I can never get it to make uh, PDF files. Period. Like it never would. It never make a PDF file, and then it would always email the link and never include the PDF file. Which for the people I work with, they just want the PDF file. They don't want a link. They're not gonna pay online. So, like to me, I just want a system that's easy for me that'll spit a PDF file out and send an email with the click of a button. And so that's why I dropped Invoice Ninja and tried Crater. Seems to work better for me, a little bit simpler. You know, I don't need uh, the quote part. I don't need parts and all the other stuff that Invoice Ninja does. I just need to make it, in I just need a tool that makes invoices and emails them. So uh, that's why I kind of play around with Crater right now. Oh, uh, use the center. Oh, climbing rescues. Yeah, I guess that make that would make sense. Hundred feet. <laughs> no, that's more than I've. I've been up a tower uh, in an elevator about six hundred feet. Uh, that's my highest I've ever went up in a tower, uh, and that was definitely not climbing. That was in an elevator. Um, we are not allowed to go up our towers these days. Um, so that was a previous company, but, uh, it actually wasn't that scary. Like I said, I, I'm not afraid of heights. Um, it was pretty cool. And where our tower is located, I got some cool views, um, from 600 feet up. <laughs> um, probably should share those. That'd be kind of, that may be fun. Although kind of give away the location. <laughs> Did you lose audio? Anybody else lose audio? I still see levels. Um, <clears throat> well, this is probably two years ago I tried, David, and uh, it was self-hosted, and there was something about Java or... It required Java and... There was some known issue with it where it didn't want to work in Lin on Linux anymore. And so I tried again with version 5 came out. Does that, does that sound right? Is there what version? Of, I mean, I don't know what version they're now. But um, I tried again when the new version came out. And it didn't still didn't want to work. Um, so... What's the score? Huh.
Oh, damn. Really? Wow. No, I didn't hear. Wow. Sounds like Monday Night Football got pretty bad. Um, all right. Um, oh, you accidentally muted your Chrome tab. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I just learned about Monday Night Football. I don't know. I, I get a... That's really sad. Yeah. Alrighty, well, um, if you have any more questions, please put them in the chat. Um, I am done with my uh, usage of Linux, and so I'm going to wrap this up. We are past the one hour approved. You're welcome, Joe. <laughs> You're welcome, Joe. <laughs> Bob on Ashley. So, yeah, say hi to Ashley for us. And your dog. Little friendly. <laughs> Tell him Puka has the same toy. Hopefully, uh, your dog is enjoying the the toy Puka scent. <laughs> she has we, they both have the same toy. They both got it for Christmas. Actually, that's kind of funny. Joe says he will say hi. Alrighty. Well, with that, I thank you all. Oh, she's enjoying the tool. He says, or oh, the good. tool, the toy. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I uh, appreciate you all, and uh, I want to say thank you again, and uh, have a good night. Thank you for being here.